Modern Technologies of Diagnosis and Treatment of Living Cells Bioelectric and Bioelectromagnetic Fundamental Principles of Treatment of Living Cells For accurate and scientific treatment of cellular disorders, we have to first identify the disorders and analyze their features and in the next step, we have to help the cell push the illness out through the same way it has entered. As explained before, the effects of destructive external and internal factors cause imbalance in the bioelectromagnetic and bioelectric bases of the cell. Almost all diseases are caused by this inequity. Thus, the cell therapy is based on bioelectric and bioelectromagnetic balance of cells and its main function includes three parts. Creation of bioelectric and bioelectromagnetic balance of cells and their organelles. Reconstruction and empowerment of energy production centers of the cell. Elimination of the cells which are no longer capable of restoring cellular balance. The first principle of fundamental bioelectric and bioelectromagnetic treatment of living cells is the artificial production of pure cellular bioelectricity. Living cells respond only positively to pure cellular bioelectricity and allow flexibility. If the artificially produced bioelectricity is not exactly in accordance with cellular bioelectricity specifications, the cell resists it as an unknown and unfamiliar factor. The cell's resistance continues to its death as it tries to refuse it. To clarify, the response of cell to unknown and unfamiliar bioelectricity is defensive in the first step and destructive in the next step. Production of pure cellular bioelectricity is a major step in fundamental cellular treatment. Designing and producing the system that is able to make pure cellular bioelectricity are the first and main phase of fundamental cellular treatment. Identification and production of bioelectric and bioelectromagnetic commands in living cells. Living cells carry out billions of bioelectric and bioelectromagnetic operations every second and their whole operation fixes the cellular activities. The main feature of these operations is that each has a specific form. Each form of bioelectric and bioelectromagnetic commands activate a special operation that is in conformity with the shape in the cell. Thousands of commands are issued in a cell simultaneously that result in thousands of operations in the cell. If the mentioned commands were not classified according to the specific forms, it would be impossible for the cells to perform various activities simultaneously, and the operations would be likely mixed. In other words, if the cell is to do operation number one, its specific command that is number one must be issued. For example, 100 bioelectric and bioelectromagnetic commands simultaneously create 100 operations in pancreas cells that will result in insulin production. The commands should have 100 different forms in order to prevent any mix-ups. The rule is also applied in the consecutive operations that must be carried out one by one. For instance, the operations start with number 1 and end with number 100. In that case, 100 different commands start with number 1 and end with number 100. Living cells respond to bioelectric and bioelectromagnetic commands individually and collectively. For example, the total operations needed for producing insulin in a cell can be carried out by their total specific commands and produce perfect insulin. Or a specific command can be applied for activating one stage of production of insulin. The second important step for fundamental cellular treatment is to identify different forms of bioelectric and bioelectromagnetic commands of living cells. We can directly control and lead each of thousands of billions of living cells by exact identification of the commands and their applications. 
The next important measure for fundamental cellular treatment is the highly calculated transfer of bioelectric and bioelectromagnetic commands to cells. To achieve the desired objectives and results, we have to outline appropriate programs. Then the programs should be directed to the target cells to obtain the desired results. It is impossible to do such a delicate and important task in existing places like hospitals and laboratories, and for the following reasons, treatment procedures are required to be performed in a special place. The living cells have a small bioelectric and bioelectromagnetic domain, which usually ranges from picovolt to millivolt and from picogauss to nanogauss. Strong electromagnetic and electric fields surrounding us are uncountable and cause destruction and imbalance. They get involved in and disrupt any artificial cellular steering programs. The cellular programs should be implemented very accurately or the desirable results will not be achieved. All things around us produce electromagnetic waves that affect each other. The active living cells also produce a great variety of bioelectromagnetic waves. These waves interact with the surrounding objects and their reactions cause secondary effects on cells. And subsequently, cells will respond to adapt themselves to new conditions. The actions and reactions take 1 27,000th of a second. To get the desired results, a special place with the following specifications is needed. It should be free of any uncontrollable external energy. The impacts of the person implementing the cellular steering project should be calculable and controllable. The above explanation reveals the difficult task of building such a place. Assessment of the outcome and making necessary changes in programs to obtain the final result. In spite of accurate implementation of parts 2 and 3 operations, the desirable goals may not be achieved for the three reasons explained below. The cellular steering programs are prepared and implemented on the basis of normal basic cells, but because of widespread environmental factors, the cells are never in the same basic conditions. The effects of external and internal factors on the cells leave almost all of them in special and unique conditions. It can be said that each cell of every living being has unique basic conditions that are different from the other cells of the same living being, even if they are homogeneous twins. Key point, all of us have cellular disorders due to the effects of numerous destructive factors around us. It can be said that all of the living beings in the world are somehow sick in terms of their main and fundamental cellular foundation. Many of the diseases have no visible clinical signs, and some of them have clinical signs, but the patient is not aware of it. For example, a person was born with one of these disorders, lived with it, and died without realizing exactly what it was. That person did not learn about health and cellular rejuvenation and full productivity, and therefore did not know anything about his or her illness, as he or she did not know anything about the correct and real activities of his or her organs, and therefore knew nothing about the disorder. Thus, each living being has their own cellular conditions that are caused by all factors during their life or even before it. The specific cellular conditions of each creature give a certain response for treatment of a disorder. Based on this principle, two living beings that have quite equal conditions and suffer from similar diseases will react to similar treatment differently. The programs of parts 2 and 3, even if done accurately, may contain some errors that ultimately affect the final result. It is too complicated to precisely calculate the impact the venue of the cellular steering project space has on it, so there is always room for error that affects the final outcome. After each fundamental cellular treatment stage, its results should be analyzed and the programs should be revised according to the specific reaction of the patient's body to the treatment. The process should continue until the desirable results are obtained, absolutely or relatively. 
The fundamental cellular treatment is classified into two general categories. A. Comprehensive general treatment. A person suffering from cellular disease usually develops disorders in three main parts. 1. General cellular imbalance and weakness of energy production centers. 2. Defective cells that are the outcome of general cellular imbalance and live in the patient's body. 3. Damages that defective cells inflict on organs. The comprehensive general treatment offers the following steps to settle the three problems. An accurate plan helps create balance in four main sections of chromosomes. Walls, channels and poles of the cells. In this way, the first problem and the main base of diseases will be removed. Repairable sick cells have a chance for rebuilding through the implementation of general cellular balance program. The cells that are not amendable will be eliminated by self-destruction as the cellular balance program is performed and the cell channels are closed and the bioelectromagnetic flow of chromosomes is controlled and the cell suicide command is issued for unbalanced cells. The program of strengthening the cell battery helps the cell boost its capability rapidly and destructive factors will be eliminated and the process of cellular reconstruction will be accelerated. The damages the sick cells inflict on the living being are in two general forms. Repairable damages. They are repaired by the comprehensive general treatment. Irreparable damages. They will be reproduced and replaced by performing the specialized treatment program in the next step. Specialized treatment. A specific disorder of a part of an organ of the living being can be targeted and treated by implementing the stages of a specialized treatment. Example 1. In case of disorders of production of digestive enzymes like lipase or amylase, the specific bioelectric command can help produce and control the two enzymes. In case of extra production, it could be decreased and if it is less than normal, it could be increased. In this way, the disorder of the digestive system is cured. Example 2. If the patient suffers from iron deficiency or excess, the specific bioelectric command of iron production can help control and treat the disorder. Thus, we can outline a specialized program of bioelectric and bioelectromagnetic steering of the cells and use it as a treatment guide for special diseases. Difference between comprehensive general treatment and specialized treatment. Comprehensive general treatment. 1. It creates relative balance in all cells of four sections. 2. It strengthens cellular batteries. 3. It neutralizes internal and external factors pressures on cells. 4. It greatly strengthens the cells to repair and rebuild the defective cells. 5. It takes the uncorrectable cells out of the circuit. If the results are achieved even with partial results, a very precise system of cellular control completes the relative achievement. Specialized treatment 1. It only affects the target cells. 2. Its direct and indirect effects on other cells are negligible and always reversible. 3. It is very effective because it focuses on one section. 4. It is easier and faster to assess the results of treatment and treatment program amendment to achieve the final result because it has a limited area of activity. 5. The treatment period will be shorter while the treatment program will be easier and results are more transparent and accurate. Full Fundamental Cellular Treatment Full Fundamental Cellular Treatment includes the comprehensive general treatment and specialized treatment and is administered according to the following order. 1. Implementation of the comprehensive general treatment. 2. Implementation of the scheduled program after the treatment to help the comprehensive general treatment reach full impact. 3. Evaluation of the results of the comprehensive general treatment. 4. 
In case the comprehensive general treatment repairs all cellular disorders and restores their normal activities, the treatment period will end and the patient will be discharged. 5. If disorders are observed in some cell activities after the comprehensive general treatment, the specialized treatment programs will be performed. The effects of the fundamental cellular treatment almost will last until the end of life and even will exist in future generations. That is why it can be called the fundamental cellular reformation. If the destructive external factors begin to affect the cells, the fundamental cellular treatment should be once again administered to treat them.